In today's video, we're checking out a Fender Princeton Reverb Amplifier. This is part of the Tone Master series. This is a digital recreation of the famous 12 watt amplifier from Fender, except it's extremely light and we get a whole lot of different options on the back panel. Now you're about to hear this in the context of a jam track, and then we'll go over to some isolated tones. But before we get started, a huge thank you to Fender for reaching out and sending out this amp for the review. I really appreciate it. If you want to check this out, I'll link it down below. Here we go. Here's the Fender Princeton Reverb Tone Master Amplifier up close, and as you saw in the intro, it's so easy to pick up. It's the lightest amp here in the house by a mile, and it's a lot lighter than the tube counterpart. Let's take a look at the front panel of the amplifier over here. We get our volume control. This amp will stay clean or emulate that clean sound up to about six-ish. Somewhere around there, it starts to get a little bit dirty. As you wind it up, it doesn't necessarily get louder. It just gets more compressed and saturated, which is very reminiscent of an actual Princeton amp. We get a two band EQ, treble and bass. This has way more low end thump than I was expecting. So I'm really impressed by the low end bass response. You'll hear a bit of that coming up. We get our onboard reverb. Again, this is 100% digital. The digital reverb doesn't have any rattles or anything. It's like the best clean reverb sound you're going to get. So this is one of the benefits of digital. And we get our onboard vibrato. Now the speed sets how fast the actual effect will go and the intensity sets how much of it you're going to hear. Now this is pretty mellow, so I'm gonna test this out by winding it most of the way up in this video when it comes to the intensity control. We get two instrument inputs over here. Input one is the one that I'll be using the majority of the video. We'll also test out number two. Now number two has minus six dB of gain and it also gives you a bit of a darker tone. We'll check that out a little bit later on. One of the best things about this amplifier is we get a legit made in Italy Jensen speaker. I really think that this contributes a big portion to the tone, especially in this little cap. The back panel of this amplifier is what makes it special and if you're a home player, this amplifier will be perfect for a number of different reasons. But the first of which is this power attenuation section over here. We can play at the full 12 watts, the Princeton is usually rated at 12 watts. We can step it down to 6, 3, 1.5, 0.75, or 0 0.3 and we'll test this out coming up in the video. On this side of the amp we have our cabinet sim off one or two. One is based on a Shure SM57 and two is based on a Royal 121 ribbon microphone which is one of the most iconic microphones that you can get and you can get a direct output thanks to this XLR out and you can also adjust the volume. Now this will give you a nice clean recording directly to an audio interface or PA speaker without having to mic the amplifier up. Additionally, we get a mute switch over here, which allows you to mute the onboard speaker. So if you want to do any recording with headphones, for example, you can mute the amplifier entirely and just use this XLR out. Included with the Princeton Reverb Tone Master, we get a two button foot switch, which allows you to turn the reverb and vibrato on and off. And to plug it in, we use this jack on the far right. Let's kick things off with some classic Stratocaster tones. And I have the Princeton Reverb Amplifier set to 12 watts. I have it mic'd up with a short SM57 and a Sennheiser E906. As you can hear, those clean tones are great. Let's switch it over to a Telecaster and see if we can get some of those classic spanky telly tones. Here we go. Up 
next I want to dial in a really great swampy tone by turning up the reverb and using the onboard tremolo. Now I've got the intensity on the tremolo all the way up and the speed you can set accordingly, but I've dialed in what I think is a great swampy tone. Let's have a listen. great things about a Princeton is once you start getting them up past about six, they really start to give you that over the edge of breakup sound. So I've dialed in a very comparable sound and they've digitally recreated this and it feels great to play under the fingers. This is neck pickup. I'm going to play a mix of rhythm and lead stuff so you can get a good sense of how it sounds. the volume control up on the amplifier, still in full 12 watt mode, what I wanted to showcase was how great the dynamics are by using the volume control on the guitar. So I'm going to start with it down, I'll turn it up incrementally so you can see just how much this amp opens up once you start using your guitar volume control. Let's take a look at the power attenuation circuit on the back of the amplifier. This is a really great feature. We're going to start with it at 12 watts and I'll incrementally switch it all the way down. This power attenuation option is awesome if you want to record at home. So what I'm going to show you now is the difference between full 12 watts and 0.3 watts. So less than a watt, but I'm going to boost the 0.3 watts in post. This is still with the microphones in front of the amp. Let's take a listen. <laughs> As you can hear, that's extremely usable. And being a YouTuber where I'm always got amps mic'd up in the room really loud, being able to turn it down and still get a great tone is really cool. Let's take a look at the XLR out. So what you're about to hear is the amp without any microphones going from the XLR out with an emulated SM57 directly into my Focusrite sound card. And option number two is the Royal 121 ribbon microphone. These are two awesome IRs to have built in. I think it sounds pretty great. Here we go. <laughs> Let's wrap this video up. I'm going to give you my final thoughts about this Princeton Reverb Tone Master amplifier from Fender. So thanks again, Fender, for sending this out. I appreciate it. I'm going to talk about what I like about this. This amplifier feels great to play at home. No questions about it. 12 watts is about as loud as you'll ever need playing here in a house. Now, if you live in an apartment, you can obviously switch it down to some of the lower power settings. 12 watts will still be too loud for most people in an apartment, but the great news is you can run this silently with the mute switch on, go out into your audio interface and record that way. I also love the fact it's as light as it is. My only small critique about this tone wise would be that I don't think the tremolo intensity feels as intense as some of the Princeton tube counterparts. But other than that, the low noise floor of this amplifier makes it feel so good when you're recording. You don't get a lot of hiss and crackle or anything like that coming through the circuit. It's just dead silent and it feels really good. And I love the fact we get a proper Jensen speaker in the back. This pine cab looks great. 
the XLR out, the power attenuator makes this one of the best home practice amplifiers. Now, if you already have something like a deluxe reverb, for example, you probably don't need this, but if you're looking for classic Fender tones at any volume, I would say this would be a really great choice. It's small, it's light, it's compact. You can take it with you. You can make it sound much larger by putting microphones in front of it or using that XLR out at a gig to a PA system. It's pretty cool. So let us know what you think about this. The definition on the low end feels a lot more present in the room than other digital modeling amplifiers that I've played. So I would have no problems recommending this to someone who's maybe doesn't want to spend the same amount of money on a tube amp or can't get that up to the volume that they want at the house or at a gig without sort of any complaints. So yeah, you can crank this up, turn the power attenuator down in the back and get some pretty cool tones. Let us know what you think. Thanks again for watching. If you want to check this out, I'll link it down below. Catch you soon. See ya.